Alright guys, what up? So, today they just released the first trailer for the new Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, if you go back on some of my videos, pretty old, oh, maybe about 2-3 years, I was very crucial, um, I'm not supportive of the Spider-Man reboot. I, and I did not see Spider- and I didn't even bother to go see the uh, Amazing Spider-Man theaters because in all honesty, I didn't feel like I wanted to- there was need to reboot it. We didn't need to see Spider-Man's origin story all over again. That being said, I didn't see- and I did not see it in theaters, but I did watch it when it came to video. That being said, I didn't think it was as awful as I thought it was going to be, but then- but then again, I- overall, I didn't really- Hair. I didn't think it was bad. I didn't want awful. But I didn't think it was great either. I just felt like it was just there. I'm like, okay. I mean, I don't really need to see Pro uh, Peter's origins over again. I mean, I read the comics. I've been watching Spider. I've watched the Spider-Man cartoon of the '90s. I know Sp uh, Spider-Man's origins. I didn't need to see it again on screen. I j especially since it was less than a decade ago. We got the first Spider-Man uh, movie. And in all honesty, I I don't like Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I don't buy him as Peter Parker. That's my biggest complaint. I just don't like him. Not as Peter Parker. I don't think he's at all. I don't think he's a bad actor. But I don't think he's Peter Parker. Emma Stone, I think, is a great Gwen Stacy. That's a great, that was a good pick. I don't buy I don't buy Garfield as Parker. I really don't. I don't like the direction they kind of took Parker in. Or, I don't like the idea that they felt the need that they had a Dark Knight, the Spider-Man uh, movies, which is completely stupid. That's not Spider-Man. Spider-Man is not dark and gritty like uh, Batman. Spider-Man's its own thing. But, I got, I got all this stuff with the sequel, with Electro, and changes, and then the Rhino, and now another villain, and... It's starting to seem like they're just tossing a bunch of shit into the film, and it's starting to sound like it's an old, gonna be an overcrowded thing, similar to Spider-Man 3, but we never know. But, they just released the trailer for it, so I'm gonna watch the trailer, I'm, trying, I'm gonna try to give a non-biased opinion about it, and I'm gonna give you my reaction to it and my thoughts. So here we go right now, the trailer for Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, that was cool. Every day, I wake up knowing. That was pretty cool. That, the that more transition. I try to say, the more enemies I will make, and it's just a matter of time before I face those with more power. Oh, that's some cheap CGI though, right I there. I can overcome. I don't know if you Sorry, I'm need to know this was Sony so badly. I had a traffic thing. <laughs> Did your traffic jam have anything to do with being, I don't know, shot at by machine guns? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was implying. It was implying that. He's <laughs> a park. There he is. Oh, You're going to want to see this. Oscorp. Get you under surveillance. Why? Isn't that the question of the day? Something you're not telling me yet, May. I once told you that secrets have a cost. The truth does too. My name is Richard Parker. I have discovered what Oscorp was going to use my research for. I have a responsibility to protect the world from what I know they're capable of. What is all this? The future. We literally can change the world. Peter. Not everyone has a happy ending. This is bigger than you, Peter. I made a choice. This is my path. So everyone in the city will know how it feels to live in a world.
just gonna say this. This is so deviating from the comics that it, at this point, it, that that's that's kind of ridiculous. First of all, the Harry Osborn thing. That is not Harry Osborn comic from comic books. That is not the Harry Osborn that we, as Spider-Man people, know. Harry Osborn is not some guy, kid out to destroy Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Uh, you know, I, I honestly don't like this whole... This, see, this is the thing I didn't like with the first one, and they kind of didn't even bother to go with and use any of it. This whole backstory, his parents, this Oscorp, some of this Oscorp stuff. I, I don't, you know, if, I thought if they're going to introduce Harry Osborn, I figured it's going to be Harry Osborn. The Peter Parker's friend Harry Osborn, not this Harry Osborn, let's destroy Spider-Man type of character who works sideline with his father like this. This is honestly deviating really far from the comic books, and I don't really kind of I don't like that. When um I don't like when movies do that. That's one I was very uh, outspoken on Iron Man three in terms of what the way they did that, and overall, there's many reasons outside of that. While that may some of those things may be one of them, but there are many other reasons why I, I dislike Iron Man three so much. Um, but you know, you know, here's the thing: for the past, let's put it this way: for the past 10, 10, 11 years or more, I the first movie of the summer in May, I would always go to the midnight showing to kick off the summer movie wa rush. It was just always, it's always been a tradition. Me and my friends, we go to the first movie, regardless of what it is. And in all honesty, this feels like the first year where I'm going to break that tradition because I still don't have an interest in seeing this. This, for one thing, this doesn't feel like Spider-Man comic books. And I, I watch this trailer again and I don't buy Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. I don't like him as Spider-Man. He doesn't feel like Peter Parker. I mean, I really wish they would recast a new person. Somebody else is Peter Parker. I like the idea, I'll give it this, I do like the idea that they're trying something different and they're not just trying to copy the Raimi movies like some other franchises, franchises try to do. They just try to mimic what was done before and play it safe. I'll give them credit that they're thinking outside the box, they're trying to do something a little different, but I think they're really deviating or pushing the boundaries on how far you should deviate from the comics before you kind of start to really alienate some of these core groups that love these characters. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, let me put it this way, I'll admit, unlike the first Spider-Man movie in the first trailer, when I first saw the first Spider-Man trailer, I just watched it, I'm like, okay, I'm watching a remake for Spider-Man's Origins again, yay, don't need it, don't care, and don't want to watch his origins all over again, I know it, but I'll admit, with this trailer, I got a little more, I'm not as, let's say, not caring at all like I was with the first Spider-Man trailer and the first Spider-Man movie. It does intrigue. It just intrigues me. I'm not a big fan of the way they're doing electro. I'm not really, a, not a fan of that look. I, I kind of wish they had gone with the um, classic and uh, comic book and even cartoon uh, electro type of uh, look. Not really a big fan of this. I guess they're going for more realism type of look. But you, here's the problem. When I heard that, I they did mention that one at one point that they there was a problem. With this whole um, post Dark Knight era, thinking that some studio execs think about minus Marvel, because Marvel, Marvel and Kevin Fergie do their own thing, but these movies that are owned outside of the Marvel Disney box, like Spider Man, the X Men, things like that, it feels like some of these studio execs have this Dark Knight S still in the back of their head where they have to do certain things. Marvel. Here's the thing. Thinking about that, make this more. This is a guy who lives, uh, literally shoots electricity out of his hands and has electricity flowing through his body. That's not real. It, though, you can't realism that. You can't because it's not because, like I just said, the guy shoots electricity out of his fucking body, man. It doesn't. <laughs> when you have characters like that, realism goes out the window because we're using our imagination. Same thing when it comes to Peter Parker. This is a kid who was bitten by a spider 
that has gene that's genetically engineered and has enabled him to set super strength, claw up walls and stuff. This isn't realism. When you have realism, can only work with characters like Batman, or even a character like the Punisher, or char or say even somebody like Daredevil. That it can only work with things when you don't have these characters. Even with Iron Man, you can use the realism with Iron Man because he doesn't have the powers. You can uh, you can even use this real this whole realism that these studios thro are throwing around lately with Captain America. But certain things you can't because when you have these type of characters who have these insanely super po power strength and villains who have these crazy type powers. The realism factor doesn't make any sense anymore because you're essentially dealing with characters that aren't real, that are make believe, that are fantasy. So I, I, I don't understand this mentality that some of the studios throw around this realism mentality because it doesn't make sense at times. I can uh, now you can do realism in a world of these characters, try to surround the world of realism, kind of like what Man of Steel did, but even there. Realism to the point where they even with that know that Superman is and it's not realism with Superman because he's Essentially an alien who has insane powers who flies Stuff that's fantasy right there now and you could but you can surround Everything else with realism you can ground him in re a reality instead of keeping him in fantasy and Spider-Man It feels like they are not doing that but that's beside the point. But this just doesn't feel Spider Man S E like Um and I know some people will say, well it just because he doesn't look like Spider Man or seem like Spider Man doesn't mean Well, you know, this is the same argument some people have with the Wolverine films and the die and certain die and certain people who think Hugh Jackman's a shit Wolverine because he looks nothing like Wolverine from the comics. And you know what, those people, I can't argue that fact with them, really. You know, when I hear that from some people who hate Wolverine and hate this stuff, and they say, and as soon as they say, they say they hate it because he doesn't know, I can't argue that fact. Because, put it this way, Darren Danofsky was going to direct Wolverine, and guess what? He didn't direct it because one of his core reasons he said, and quote, you Jackman doesn't look like Wolverine. This guy's not Wolverine, so I, you want me to direct a movie where I don't believe this guy's Wolverine. He's too tall, and he doesn't look like Wolverine at all. So, there you go. Some of us just, we I mean, you can be crucial and have your own opinions about this, but as of right now, I'm not interested, once again, in seeing this in theaters. That doesn't mean I'm not interested in seeing it, but I'm... This is not a film I'm going to jump out for. I put it this way, May second. I'm not going to jump. I think this comes out May second. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not going to jump to the movie theaters on Thursday night to see the midnight showing of this, like I would for certain other things. Because, he like said, I mean, I'm not jumping for joy over the Spider-Man reboots. Personally, like I said before, I just wish that Marvel just took back the rights and kind of did it like. Um, it should be done. Kind of, I am. I kind of wish that. Like, it, same thing when it goes with the the Fantastic Four reboot. I was somewhat intrigued about that, and then I hear that they're changing the races of characters for stupid reasons. And I'm not going to talk about that because I have my own reasoning why I hate changes of characters to race just for the sake of doing it. I would maybe maybe if we ever get to the point a year from now when they. Fantastic Four starts coming around and trailers come out then I'll make reviews and reactions and then I actually go into detail on that whole thing but that has no place in the detail for the Spider-Man movie but yeah overall I like the trailer better I like the trailer for the first Spider-Man movie but this doesn't intrigue me a lot this does not get my core as of right now x Men's still my most anticipated movie it's a movie I want to see I'm praying to I am just praying that Brian Singer does not fuck this up seriously because I am worrying a lot. I worry a lot with Brian Singer in some details because let me he sucks at dealing with the X-Men women. That's that's an automatic. He he's done a shit job with all the female X-Men. But yeah. So leave some comments below. Tell me what you think. Are you excited for this uh, Spider-Man? Did this trailer make you go crazy personally it didn't make me go crazy but I'm pretty sure there's probably some other people who are really excited after seeing this trailer and I'm not saying that there shouldn't be 
You have the right to be excited for whatever you want. That's your own. Everybody is entitled to their own personal opinion about things, and I and I'm fine with that. I'm not a price. I don't tell people what they should and shouldn't like, but I will criticize people for being hypocrites or acting like certain things for the sake of it. But yeah, leave some comments below. Tell me what you think, and I'll probably have another video up, most maybe next week when um for probably for the Hobbit because the Hobbit comes out next week. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be seeing that, so I'll probably have a review up for that. Also, there's a lot of rumors of a Godzilla trailer coming out next week. Maybe it being attached to the Hobbit movie, so I might, might have to talk about that if I see the trailer and in the Hobbit movie. And I'll probably be talking about Interstellar, the Nolan movie, which I'm looking forward to too. So I'll see you guys in the next video.